观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看《羊厨房》，卖家秀，买家秀，我是刘烨。在日常生活当中呢，很多人都会担心啊，吃的太多会影响自己的身材。其实呢，要告诉大家，这大可不必，自己的身材自己做主，吃的健康那就可以了。那我们今天的卖家秀啊，也会给您推荐一些好吃又不易发胖的美食哦。Que tiene hotaka? My absolute favorite seafood: oysters, Kilpatrick, battered, and au naturel. Crunchy, creamy, salty. A quick and easy seafood chowder everyone will love. It's a good dish on a marae if you're feeding a whole cup of hakaropu, but it's also a fantastic dish if you're wanting to have dinner at home with your family. This bowl of goodness right here for me sits at the top of the Kaimoana food chain. I absolutely love teal. My passion and love for oysters is because my Fano and I grew up on the oyster farm. Who wouldn't love teal? I can do so many things with oysters, but before we get into that, I've got to taste one to make sure that they're perfect. Always the best. Hey, hakami haro iyo manuhiri. Kora hia e nei tohu taka hei kai mate mata, mate waha hoki. We're going to try something a little bit different today. We're going to be making sliders. Now we know this isn't something traditional for Maori people because why? It's too small. We like big. We like bulky. To a tahiaki, better oyster sliders. To make this dough, add lukewarm water to a bowl. Add yeast, sugar, and combine. Cover and put in a warm place to rise for 20 to 30 minutes. Once risen. Add flour until the dough reaches its desired consistency. Add oil to your hands. Add flour to the surface and begin kneading. Cover once again and leave to rise. We're going to oil because what I don't want to do is to have them sticking. To our tray, oil my hands up. Once again, more oil onto the dough, and I use it to pick up the sides. Now, for these buns, I'm going to be using this part of my hand to cut the dough, as opposed to flattening it out and using a knife. This way, I kind of feel like I can gauge the size that I want for my sliders because they will rise. All I'm doing is folding it into the middle to create a beautiful ball. I know it looks tiny, but trust you me, they will rise. To waitia te nei hati pe monga prawa e waru. So the oven has been preheated on 180 degrees. These are ready to go in for anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. Let's get on to battering the oysters. So, in our bowl, we're going to add self-raising flour, chilled ice water, and then stir. What I normally tend to do is just to test my oil because if it's not hot enough, then all you're doing is drowning your batter and your oyster in oil. A couple of drips. She's perfect and ready to go. So very much like the kutai or the mussel, the teal has a has a chewing gum part, and that's the part you want to cut to separate it from its shell. So we're going to start deep frying our battered oysters. Drop these in one by one. These are only going to take at least 30 seconds to cook. These are ready to take out. It's as easy as that.、Mm, they look absolutely delicious. 
right, let's see how these buns have turned out. So far, so good. It's absolutely perfect. To that, I'm going to go in with some coleslaw. Hapaurua ngātio. Mete aioli. Top it off with the bun lid and a skewer to hold. And there you have it, a battered oyster slider. Oyster Kilpatrick. You may find this in some bars or restaurants. And by the sounds of things, it must have some Irish whakapapa. Parmesan cheese, bacon, Worcester sauce. Who wouldn't love it? Let's get into it. So to start this dish, I've got a little bit of a tip for you. If you add rock salt on the bottom of your tray, it stops your teal or your shells from moving around. We're just going to add our teal into our dish. Yum. We're going to add some bacon, some Worcester sauce. This adds a bit of kick to this dish. We're going to add a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese on top. And just like that, we're going to pop it into our oven on grill at about 120 degrees. This should take about a minute because all you're wanting it to do is for your cheese to melt and then it's all ready to go. Quarite, Oysters Kilpatrick. And now, on to our third and final oyster recipe. There is nothing like eating raw oysters, but we're going to zhuzh it up with a beautiful vinaigrette. In a bowl, we're going to add malt vinegar, red onion, diced finely, and to balance it out, we're going to add some beautiful soft brown sugar. Going to stir and it's just one of those things that you've got to taste and season as you go. Perfect every time. Balance your oysters on a bed of rock salt. Drizzle the vinaigrette over the top. Now that's what I call perfection on a plate. Raw teal with a vinaigrette. Oysters three ways, perfect for a platter. Normally I do this on a larger scale and I fill tables of kaimana, but today we have a trio of teal tasters. Have vinaigrette mixed with that saltiness, the sweetness, cutting through. Parmesan, crispy bacon, Worcester sauce, match made in heaven. Crunchy. And exactly what an oyster called Patrick should taste like. And last, but definitely not least, there's only one way to eat it, and that's to get in there. Crunchy, creamy, salty. Yum. E haere ake nei, a family favourite. Who does not love a seafood chowder? And brisket, but not as you know it. Who does not love a seafood chowder? This particular dish I would normally cook for many people. It's a good dish on a marae if you're feeding a whole kapahaka ropu, but it's also a fantastic dish if you're wanting to have dinner at home with your whanau. 
Anai te rārangi kai mo te tohutaka nei. E hara i te mea he nui ngā kīnaki. Nō reira, haka mātauria i tēnei hei kai mā te whānau katoa. So we're just going to get straight into it. The prep is nice and easy. To make things easier, cut the potatoes and prepare to parboil. Now I do like them in small cubes and the reason why I like them in small cubes is because once again it goes further but it's easier to put on the spoon and you can get more than one because we all know we want more than one rewai on a spoon. We're now going to move on to the onion. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be small or chunky, it's really just whatever your knife's going to allow you to do but we're just going to keep it simple. See look that's perfect, like I said that's all you need. Right, so we've got some kūtō or some mussels that I've already opened and I'm just going to give them a bit of a chop. Some of the mussels will be chopped, while the rest will be left in their shell. This will add flavour and another visual dimension to your dish when plating up. Going to turn our stove on, nice high heat. Going to add our oil. Hakaurua ngā aniana. Good old wooden spoon. Okay, that's looking fabulous. So if you didn't know, with all curries, you must burn your curry off. And what that means is you add it to your oil and you cook it through because when you do it that way, your flavours start to release. Hakaurua te kaimuana, āta kōraritia, katahi ka hakauru i ngā riwai. So see what I mean by having them parboiled, they're still going to hold their shape. If they were fully cooked, there's a huge risk that we would end up with mashed potatoes in our chowder. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, just a little bit. Add boiling water to your pot and some parsley. Make sure you use a thicker coconut cream for a richer taste. Slowly add the cream, stir, and then add the rest of your seafood. Now these will all cook within a couple of minutes of being in this pot. So all we do from here is we're just going to pop a lid on, allow it to boil, and then we're going to be ready. Yeah, this is perfect. So we're going to go in with my trusty ladle, good old cup, everybody has one, and you're just going to scoop up your chowder. To this we're just going to drizzle over some cream, not to add any flavour, but purely just to add another colour to the presentation. Now we're going to go in with our garnishes, so we have spring onion, flat leaf parsley, fried shallots, and then a bit of a surprise for this particular chowder, we're going to add nori. Now nori is a type of seaweed. In Te Tairawhiti it's known as paringo. Other places will call it paringo. But today, because we're working with kai that you can access anywhere, we're going with nori. And of course, always got to have some bread or some flour to soak up all those juices. So the time has come where I get to indulge in this kaimuana. As I've always said, it is my favourite seafood. So I'm ready to get in there. perfect dish for seafood lovers like myself and is always a guaranteed hit at any marae. Delicious. So when you're busy and you know that all the whanau are coming around for a pie, this is a quick and easy recipe that you can pop in in the morning, do what you need to do. You can pull it out in the evening. Juicy, hearty, meaty goodness. Slow roasted brisket. It's commonly used in a boil up but today we're going to transform this into the most amazing roast you've ever had. So 
So to this, we're going to add garlic. This is going to smell delicious wafting through the house when it's roasting. We're going to grate in some ginger. We're going to add some salt. You know what they say, some for the plate, over the shoulder, good luck. We're now going to go in with three sauces. The first being barbecue sauce. This adds smokiness to the brisket. Sweet Thai chilli for a kick. Ki naki aporo, mete huka parodi. We're using brown sugar to caramelise the brisket. The next thing I'm going to do is remove my jewellery, wash my hands, and then I'm going to get into this rub. The best thing about brisket as well is that fat content that's on the meat that's going to add to all the flavour to the juices. It actually creates its own hinu without you having to add anything extra. Add the brisket to a roasting bag to help it retain moisture and flavour during the slow roast. To accompany the dish, we're doing roast pumpkin smash and broccolini. The reason why we're doing broccolini and pumpkin is purely because the style of the dish, the brisket, has all the punch and all the flavour. So we want simple veggies to accompany the meat to add texture and colour to the dish. When you roast pumpkin, you enhance its natural flavours and sweetness. This is perfect for our smash. Add salt and prepare the broccolini for blanching. This should take around three minutes once the water starts to boil. Blanching keeps it vibrant and crunchy because the last thing you want is soggy broccolini. After three minutes, remove from the heat and add to ice chilled water to stop the cooking process. The broccolini is ready. The pumpkin's lovely, hot, and ready to smash. So we're just going to get in there and start smashing it up. We're going to keep it nice and rustic. Get all those oils, salt. It's perfect. Oh. This smells absolutely beautiful. So a little trick, when I go to open up hot oven bags, tongs, nice sharp knife, make sure it's away from you because the steam, we don't want to get burnt. Mm, mm, mm. Now it's time to plate up. To balance the intense flavours of the meat, add a dollop of sour cream to your smash. I have been waiting for this all day and I'm just going to get in there and eat it. There you have it, slow roasted brisket with roasted pumpkin smash and broccolini. If there was a smell button on your TV, now is when you would want to push it because the aromas coming from this beautiful piece of meat is amazing. It is so tender and beautiful, covered in juices. It is juicy, tender. Definitely feel that kick from that sweet Thai chili. Always got to have your greens. Mm. Any Fano would be happy to see this on their table for any occasion, not only a Sunday roast, Christmas, 21st, birthdays, you name it. The best slow roasted brisket. A delicious and easy way to impress your Fano and friends. 
put it on in the morning and forget about it. E haere ake nei. I show you a quick and easy way to whip up a decadent dessert when you have no time. If you're a busy mama like myself, and the girls have decided to come around at short notice, you haven't had a lot of time to prepare anything, and if you're lucky enough to have any cake left behind, this is a simple, stunning dessert that you could make. Tiramisu. Leftover cake is perfect for this dish. I'm using my Madeira and chocolate vegan cake, but you can use whatever you have at home. Tiramisu is simply a coffee dessert. So we're going to start with the main ingredient and make some coffee. Instant because it's always guaranteed to be in the bowl at the marae. Use a lot of coffee because we want it quite strong. This is what we'll use to soak the cake and is really the base to a good tiramisu. Sweeten it up with a bit of sugar. And now moving on to the cream. E haka mahi a nga ahau i te mascarpone. Tāpuri hia te creamy kia pai tō ranu i ngā mea e rua. So why I'm adding cream is that it just helps to break down the mascarpone because the mascarpone is quite a solid product. This helps me to work with it when I'm going to pipe it. But also, I mean, let's face it, this is a great way to make things go further. All right, now if you've never piped anything before or don't even own a piping bag, glad bags, they are the business. It is actually quite simple and quite easy. Roll down the top of the bag and add your mascarpone mix. Other alternatives for piping bags are simply making them out of baking paper. That's probably the next step after a glad bag. I like to take some air out of it. Gonna move it towards the corner of your glad bag, just like that. And when we're ready to serve up, it's as simple as cutting the tip off. And now we're going to create our tiramisu. So we have our leftover cake. We've got our vegan chocolate mug cake and our Madeira cake. Starting with the chocolate cake, lay a bits of the cake at the bottom of each glass. Hei haka mutu ake, maturu hia te kafe. Slice the tip of the glad bag. Just, just want enough in there. Right, now we're going to go in with our Madeira cake. It's beautiful colour, but do you know what else it reminds me of? Every marae or every function has trifle. So all you aunties and nannies out there that make trifle on the marae, give this a go. You will look trick. Another layer of coffee. You don't want to add too much to drown it, but you want to add enough that you can taste it. Another layer of cream. Pipe it however you like. We're going to cover it with one more layer before it's finished. Everything's looking great, so we're going to dress these babies. It's got some beautiful whipped cream. Yes. You do not want to be telling yourself you're on a diet when you eat this dessert. Sprinkling of cocoa. Some coffee beans. We've even got some golden coffee beans. How about that? We're doing chocolate shavings just to add that little bit of classiness so it's made out as if I've been cooking all day. This just looks divine. And it would not be a tiramisu if you didn't have the good old classic lady fingers. And there you have it, tiramisu. Tiramisu, quick and easy. The girls would never know that I only took five minutes to put this together. It looks great. Let's see if it tastes great. Yolajia